Assalamu alaikum. I'm Carl Arundel, and you're watching In Focus. Now, the Labour Party's national executive has found itself at the heart of legal challenges and counter legal challenges as the rights of newly registered members to participate in the leadership elections have been considered by the most senior courts in the land. It has been described as a battle for the heart and soul of the Labour Party. Many have argued that these legal challenges go to the fundamentals of Britain's democratic values. To better understand the meaning and the implications of these historic rulings, I'm delighted to be joined by Professor Bill Bowring, a professor of law at the prestigious Birkbeck University of London and a practicing barrister at Field Court Chambers in Gray's Inn. Assalamu alaikum, Professor Bowring, and Good welcome to Carl. Focus. Yeah. Now, last week the media was awash with the news that 130,000 new members of the Labour Party were to be given the right to vote in the forthcoming leadership elections um, after a one particular group had funded was funded by 1,700 backers online who raised 30,000 pounds to support this legal action by five actual members. Now, and they were successful in the High Court. The, the judge, Mr Justice Hickenbottom, said, and I'm going to quote him, at the time each of the claimants joined the party, it was the common understanding as reflected in the rule book that if they joined the party prior to the election process commencing as new members, they would be entitled to vote in any leadership contest. Now, what was that decision uh, by the j justice uh, more about take the issue of taking people's money under false pretenses, uh, um, a sort of trades description breach, or was it about the fundamentals of democratic principles being compromised? No, it's a straightforward contract. So this is just the same as if you go into a shop and buy something or if you enter into a higher purchase agreement or something like that. Uh, and so there is a contract and there is small print. And you may well find yourself caught out by the small print if you hadn't re read it carefully. And if there's a dispute as to whether you're getting what you paid for under the contract, then a court will have to decide what was the meaning of the small print. And that's exactly what has happened here. Now, John McDonnell, the shadow chancellor, uh, said that, and I'm quoting him, the decision taken to freeze out new members since January was an affront to democracy and went against everything the party stands for. Labour HQ, he said, is wasting members' money to prevent member, members itself having a democratic vote. Now, the judge on that, on that particular occasion ruled that uh, there was a need for the Labour Party to refund every, and he said it, disenfranchised member who paid £25 for a register to support a vote uh, instead. Now, a decision which alone, from the various calculations, would have cost the Labour Party millions of pounds. Uh, I think they were saying about a million for every 40,000 people. Firstly, can you explain what the legal argument behind the action in the first place that was taken by the five and the significance of then the initial court decision. We'll get on to what's happened since in a moment, uh, which I, I've understood was based on the, the way the law governs the relationship between institutions, uh, associations, including political parties and its members. Again, it's a straightforward contract. So if you pay your money uh, on the uh, understanding you're going to get something in return for that money, for example, you pay money to Amazon and you expect to receive a book and then they say, sorry, you're not going to get the book. Your response would be, OK, I'll have my money back then. Thank you. So that is what the judge meant. Was it's a very simple breach of contract situation. And if you don't get that which you had paid for under the contract, then you can expect to get your money back. And that would, of course, uh, caused the Labour Party huge problems. In any case, uh, Mr Justice Higginbottom uh, decided that it was a very straightforward contract situation and therefore they were entitled to get that which they had paid for. So that hence the, the requirement to pay the £25 back to all those well, people. Well, if they didn't get it. Yeah, so, so they had a choice, either pay up £3 yeah. million or, or let them vote. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, a week later... We, we then see a completely revised headline um, when we hear that the NEC has successfully overturned that decision in a high uh, court appeal as three judges, Lord Justice uh, Beats and Lord Justice, uh, Lady Justice McCurr and Lady, Lord Justice Sales, um, seem to have accepted the new argument of the Labour HQ, because apparently it was, uh, you know, based on some uh, obscure clause in the Labour Party rule. I think they said Chapter 4, Clause 11, 1A, which it would seem 
uh, allows the NEC executive to ignore all the rules altogether, no doubt, when it comes to leadership elections. Is that a fair summary of w w what's happened there? My understanding is that this was a point that was not raised in the uh, initial hearing. So it's something which the uh, Labour Party, NEC and Tom Watson, of course, had found in the intervening week. And so it was a new argument. And, of course, the, the five uh, claimants argued very strongly that, actually, when you read this properly, it doesn't give the NEC such powers. Uh, however, the court uh, was on the side of the NEC and said, well, actually, that does give the NEC the right to do anything it likes, including uh, saying that these 130,000 people don't get that which they had paid for. So what does... Um uh, it mean now for the five members who took the case to the court. I, I, I think I've understood that they may be responsible for the costs, or at least some of the costs of the NEC. They're having to pay half the costs, so £30,000. And the uh, action originally was funded by crowdfunding. And in, uh, is crowdfunding a, a body, or is that no, just... No, is just, just no, no, no. Crowdfunding means that you go out on social media and say, could everyone please pledge or cough up 50, 50 quid or whatever they want to put in? I think 50 quid is the usual amount. And if you, of course, can get uh, 50,000 people each to put up 50 quid, that's a substantial amount of money. Yeah. So rather than getting a wealthy backer, um, which, you know, who knows, some people might have, crowdfunding is these days the way in which a good cause can get paid for by lots of individual people chipping in. My understanding is that the £30,000 which the five have to pay has probably already been raised through crowdfunding. Um, so there's no, there's no question of a fine or anything like that. This is simply the contribution to the costs of the Labour NEC in uh, taking the case as far as the Court of Appeal. But isn't it fair to say that in the in the old days there would have been legal aid for such a, a, a case? I don't think there would ever have been legal aid actually for a case concerning a political party. A legal aid has been very substantially cut, but I think these days, if a case was to do with the public interest, um, then of course uh, there might well be legal aid. But this is a straightforward contract case between the people who joined the party and paid their money and the party. Now, Paddy Lillis, the chair of the Labour NEC, said that, and I'm going to quote her, it is crucial to the Labour Party that our governing body has the authority to debate, decide and implement the procedures, timetable and voting eligibility for our internal elections and selections. Doesn't she have a point? Well, this, thus far, of course, the NEC has been at war with Jeremy Corbyn, even though Jeremy Corbyn is the duly elected leader of the party. Uh, the NEC is going to change radically in September after the party conference, because then we will have the six new constituency uh, representatives who have just been elected, by the way. So then the balance of power is going to shift quite significantly. Well, but was, that, was, that won't be until September. I was going to say that I was a bit, little bit puzzled, because there was I reading headlines uh, in the newspapers, say, such as one that said, a clean sweep for pro-Corbyn left-wingers uh, uh, um, in the NEC elections. And you mentioned about the six. They were all what they call, um, I think, um, momentum-backed... Uh, well, there was uh, a slate. There was a slate. Yeah. And... Um, it seemed to me that, that, that it was a foregone conclusion that, uh, um, one, uh, there would be no appeal, and two, that Jeremy more or less uh, was going to have a clean sort of uh, run. No, I would say that after September, there may very well be a new general secretary of the Labour Party, and after September, there may well be, a and in fact, there probably will a be, a, a, new, a new chairman yeah. of the NEC. Yeah. But, of course, that's September. We're in August. And things are moving so fast at the present moment. Yeah. Um, so what, what, what did the Guardian mean when it said Corbyn can't consolidates grip on Labour with high court and NEC successes? It's all a bit premature to make such... Well, who knows, you know? I mean, who knows at all? What we do know, of course, and we have the figures now, is that constituency Labour parties all over the country are overwhelmingly voting for Corbyn. Very few of them are actually nominating Owen Smith. Um, and w I watched, actually, among, one can see it on the Daily Mirror website, uh, the latest hustings 
last week, um, a really prolonged debate between uh, Corbyn and Smith. My personal view is that Corbyn looked a lot more convincing than Smith. I, and, I, I, and so, you know, one of the factors when it comes to the election and to the party conference will be the fact that constituency Labour parties, so these are the activists, you know, so a few hundred people in each... But they are overwhelmingly for Corbyn. Well, I think it, I've heard it said that um, it, it's a little bit strange that they should be pitching a, a very much a non-credible candidate. Some have referred to him as a Mr Bean against Jeremy Corbyn. Well, um, I mean, they, they have found it impossible to put up a credible candidate so far. And I thought, you see, when we had the original elections, that as between Liz Kendall, Yvette Cooper and Andy Burnham, that at least one of them would begin to look credible during that campaign. In fact, as the campaign went on, they looked less and less credible. So I think it's a serious problem for the right wing of the Labour Party and for the Blairites, if they are indeed Blairites, or for Tom Watson indeed, to find somebody who, against Jeremy Corbyn, who is supposed to be unelectable, uh, not a credible person, why cannot they find anybody credible? I thought that Ange Angela Eagle might be such a person. Well, but then they decided not to run her, so... Well, she, she did stumble at a few hurdles. Well, they've all stumbled, the, I think. Yes. <laughs> but, so, <laughs> but, 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 but before I get, go on to uh, what's likely to happen yes. to the party as a whole, there's been some rumours that the five members who... who, who who's a, whose no. case has been overturned, may well take their case to the Supreme Court. Well, the fact of the matter is, at the present moment, that the Court of Appeals denied leave to go to the Supreme Court. So that's the first step. So they said, no, you can't go to the Supreme Court. Now, there is the possibility of applying directly to the Supreme Court for leave to appeal to the Supreme Court. But then you're getting into a much more expensive operation. And I suspect advice is being taken at the moment. Now... No question that top lawyers are advising the five. So I'm sure at the moment they're sitting in a room together deciding what the next move, if any, should be. And, sorry, I don't know, remember the, the, the name you gave to the collection process online? Crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, yeah. but I don't know how well, I far... Think that, I think if a decision was taken to try to go to the Supreme Court, yeah. I strongly suspect the money would be found... And, of course, some of the very high-profile lawyers may be prepared to do some pro bono work. Well, who knows? Yes, yeah. could be. Um, now, um, I was reading an article in the Financial Times uh, for which the headline read, Labour's leadership battle exposes civil war for the soul of the party which uh, it went on to make the point that the party, instead of sitting on a gold mine of subscription fees and energised activists, I'm quoting it, um, is, is turning the whole leadership contest into a civil war between the parliamentary and the constituency party, taking into account that the party's membership has, especially since the mass resignation of the cabinet of Jeremy a few couple of weeks ago, um, has swelled to more than half a million people, the highest membership since the 1970s, and more than all the other parties uh, put together, is, isn't Jeremy's victory in the leadership contest a foregone conclusion? We've talked about the non-viable uh, alternative candidates. Is civil war an apt description? And is, and this is a big question, there a real chance that the party may actually see a repeat of the 1981 split, uh, which saw the formation of the Social Democrat Party? See, I, th I think we're living through the aftermath of the Iraq war. And I think the defining moment, actually, for the relationship between the uh, parliamentary party and the members is the question of who went which way on that absolutely disastrous war. And, of course, we're also talking about the legacy of Tony Blair. Now, in terms of Jeremy Corbyn, nobody, least of all him, expected him to be the candidate for the leader or, indeed, to win it. Fact is, though, that the Labour Party is transformed as a result. That is very ironical. The reason it's so ironical is that the change to the rules uh, to make the election of the leader a matter for the membership was introduced by the right wing of the Labour Party yes. to block the union. So yeah. th this is actually, uh, you know, uh, you wish for something and you get the opposite, yeah. of course. Yeah. Uh, and now, in fact, the biggest unions are actually supporting Jeremy Corbyn anyway. 
So that maneuver, which was really to put the unions in a weaker position, has turned into its opposite so far as the parliamentary party is concerned. We've also got the Chilcot report, which was rather more hard-hitting than anyone had expected. I think that also puts the right wing of the Labour Party and Owen Smith himself. Owen Smith, by the way, as clear in the hustings last week, is in favour of interventions. So one has Jeremy Corbyn, who's a pacifist, who is against interventions. Owen Smith, who thinks interventions are rather a good thing. So I think there is Regime indeed a change. battle for the soul of the party. Yeah. Another defining issue is, of course, Trident. You know, do we really need to have a nuclear deterrent? Now, Owen Smith and the right wing of the party are very clear, yes, we do. I think that a lot of the members would say, well, who do we think we are exactly in Britain? Also, but, but another, another consequence of Brexit may well be, may well be who knows, the, the breakup of the United Kingdom, any case.